what is up everybody welcome back to hater it live it's not gonna be i'm not gonna be on too long today but there's been quite a bit of home theater news some big news that's happened yesterday and today so i figured i would come on here and talk about it a little bit if you've been living under a rock for the last day or two you may not have known or heard that sapiti is no more they are going under so Zapiti is going away and I don't have any information other than the information that's already out there. So I believe Shane and Chana Techno Dad, they both got emails since they have the product and they've reviewed them. I've never officially re reviewed a product for them. I did review one of their players, but it wasn't sent to me. So therefore I did not receive an email, but pretty much. Yeah, you won't be able to add new movies if you burn your if you buy new movies after sounds like the end of the year, December ish. It sounds like you won't be able to use or add new movies to Zapiti players because if you if you've used one before, then you know that it has to log into their servers and it downloads the content. That's the part that I didn't really care for about it, but. Yeah, sounds like after the end of the year, you won't be able to use the Zapiti for new new movies. But I think they're working on some type of solution, like an app or something that will allow you to use your movies. I don't, I don't know if that means like you'll be able to add new movies to it with that app. That's not a whole lot of information right now. But for those of you that do have Zapiti's and you're looking for on alternative I would highly recommend Zidoo players so I have many videos on my channel about Zidoo I just released one today on the Z20 Pro so go check that out if you haven't already Zidoo players are fantastic players they're pretty much almost exactly the same as same functionality as Zapiti players they do the same thing they're just a little bit different they're built differently and then the biggest difference is the basically the the, the OS the operating system and the on-screen display I did not care for the on-screen display in the OS on the Zapiti it was a little outdated for me but as far as it you know functionality it played well video and audio so yeah, if you don't know what Zidoo is, Zidoo is pretty much the, exactly the same thing. And Zidoo just released some new players, so let's check those out briefly. Let me present my screen here. There we go. So, Zidoo released, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, looks like four five new players so I have the Zidu Z20 Pro which is this player just did a video on that dropped that today earlier today so go check that out this one has an internal drive bay and it's pretty much so the entry level is going to be your Z9X Pro which is this one so this one does not have a drive bay however it does have some USB ports on you've got a SATA port on the side so you can hook up a an internal hard drive directly to it with the SATA cable and then on the back you've got a USB 3.0 port there might even be another one yeah you've got two more on the side there so this is the entry-level one this is the one that most people are probably gonna get and the price on these things are very reasonable actually think they may be underselling them a little bit but yeah the price is much more affordable than Zapiti players I felt like Zapiti I don't know they made some weird decisions because you used to be able to be a, you used to could be able to buy Zapiti on Amazon some years ago and then they just disappeared off of Amazon and then they went to like a dealer driven type of sales thing I thought that was kind of weird and then you know the whole operating system where it has to connect to the, the internet and stuff it's 
it was really weird. I, they made some decisions that I didn't really agree with that probably didn't help them either. All right, let's see who's in the chat. My boy, Raul Cowboy. What's up, Raul? One of my good friends there. Checking in from LinkedIn. Appreciate you. Nutriendo. Your last video was very informative. Congrats. Appreciate you, Nadev Freight. Yeah, so it's funny. I was actually sitting on that video for about a couple weeks. I filmed that a couple weeks ago. And I just never got around to really finishing editing it. And then after yesterday when that when that news broke i was like you know what? this is the perfect time to release this video so i stayed up late last night and basically finished editing that video i had to do a couple other things but i was like i'm gonna post this tomorrow because i want to get good traction on this rob james says hey all what's going on rob appreciate you michael walker did you speak to Shane Lee about his speed of ripping Ultra HD 4K movies? Last night, there was someone online, the Techno Dad, who had a top-of-the-line Intel machine with the GTX 4090 who copied, who could rip Ultra HD. Mike Walker, I did talk to Shane Lee, and he said he does not rip them in 5 or 15 minutes, I, I think you were saying. He said 50. So I can confirm that with him. I texted him after that. He said it was 50. So probably sounded like 15 which I was fairly certain that wasn't, that's not possible. But Blu-rays in 30 minutes, he had a serious gaming machine. But yeah, so yeah, Zadu is probably going to make a lot of money now because, you know, there's, there's some other, there's some other players. Pretty much the only other one is Dune. I don't think a lot of people really even know about them. I only know a little bit about Dune because when I was searching years ago uh, with Plex and stuff, I, I remember seeing Dune and at the time they were, I guess they were still re relatively cheap, but at the time it was expensive to me at least. And they didn't, there wasn't really a whole lot known about them. I think they had a pretty decent following, but I don't think they ever really took off like Zipidi and Zidu. But yeah, getting back to alternatives, they have Zidu. So Xenon X Pro, that's going to be your entry level. And I'm using this website here because for some reason, they're not all on Amazon right now. Even the one that I bought, the Z20 Pro, I bought it on Amazon and I looked today and it's not even on there. The only one that's on there is, I believe, like the Z, either the Z20 or Z2000 Pro or the Z2600. So your next step up is going to be the Z20 Pro, and it's pretty much exactly the same as the Z9X. Obviously, the build is different, but the step up, you get an, an internal hard drive bay. And they also have new remotes, which I have here, and I guess I'll show you that now. So let's see if it'll focus. So the new remote is on my right, so it would be your left. And then the old remote is the Z9X remote so I like the new remote this one here much better it does feel a little bit cheaper but it just looks a lot better it's sleeker I think the buttons are laid out well and I like that it's blacked out so that's the remote and then your next step up is going to be the looks like it's the Z2000 Pro so this one, you get a bigger chassis, and you get also get an internal drive bay, I believe, on the front, I think, here. And then on the back, you've got your USB, your Ethernet, your HDMI, <coughs> excuse me, the optical, RS-232, <clears throat> you've got coaxial. And then your next one is going to, and that one is 518 so $518. Next step up is going to be the Z, Zidu Z2600. And someone was asking what the difference is between those two. The difference is this one, let me see if it'll show you. Yeah, so this one has an, an additional HDMI out and it has a better power supply. And you can go to Zidu's website, they have all that information on there. So the Zidu 2600 is pretty much the same as the Z2000, but again, you get an additional HDMI out 
for audio only. So if you're using this and you don't have like, if you have legacy equipment that doesn't support um, Dolby Atmos or something, you can't send it over directly over. You can probably use that as an out, go directly into your TV. And if you have, if your TV has eARC, then you can send that out. If you have eARC, then you, you shouldn't need it. But that's the Z2600. And I believe all the hard drives support up to 16 terabytes. I believe and they have all the new players have HDMI 2.1 so so you'll get 4k 120 uh, no 8k but 4k 120 uh, I'm sorry 4k 60 so even though it's HDMI 2.1 it's not 4k 120 it's 4k 60 12 bit 444 color space internal drive bays can support up to a max of 17.6 terabytes. That's a really weird number, so it's probably 16 terabytes. And then you have your, where's the other one? The Zidu Ultra HD 5000. This one, I believe, has two hard drive bays. It may have a better power supply as well, but you also have XLRs on here. Uh, it looks like you've got a couple more USB ports, RS-232, looks like that's another HDMI out. So you've got a little bit, a few more inputs, probably, you know, better power supply, and then you've got your XLR. Let's check the comments. The three alternatives is streaming, physical media, and cloud escape. So technically, I wouldn't put streaming in there because these aren't streaming, like these don't have streaming apps on them the zapiti doesn't have streaming apps you you might be able to sideload but natively it's not that's not what it's geared toward for so the zadu definitely doesn't have streaming apps on it again it's android so you can probably sideload it but I, i'm not buying these things for for streaming and then kaleidoscape is not a streamer either yes you do have to download the movies but you're not streaming it you download it and it downloads locally so i wouldn't I wouldn't say that's even an alternative because it's not streaming. Physical media and Kaleidoscape, yes. Dune, yes. Again, I don't have any experience with Dune. I think I reached out to them once to get a, a review unit, but I don't think they ever responded back to me. But maybe I'll reach out to them again. I, I, I've heard that they're kind of buggy, though. Let's see. I know about Dune because of the movie, <laughs> right? Yeah, different Dune. Kscape starts at 8,000 with movies, yeah. So Kscape, I mean, yeah, it's an alternative. But in this niche, I wouldn't put that in the same class because it's just not the same thing. But if you want to consider it an alternative, if you have the money, go for it, man. And speaking of the Kaleidoscape, I just got in my review unit today, a little while ago, from FedEx. So... I'm excited to hook that up again. I had one for a couple weeks and I had to give it back. So I didn't really get to spend much time with it. I didn't get to make any content with it. So I'll be able to keep this one for, for a while. Rob James says, very sad about Zapiti considering I have two of them. I won't change players until they decide if they're going to for sure have an app or not to continue using it. Yeah, that's, I find that weird. Like, so I can't support it anymore. I, I'm, I'm assuming there was all kinds of copyrights and, and stuff. But if you can't use it, how are they allowed to make an app that then allows you to use it? Like, it's either you can use it or not. Like, if they, heck, if they can make an app, why can't they just keep using the same platform? But I don't know, man. That's That's a really weird situation. Unfortunately, I wouldn't put much stock in that right now just because, yeah, like you don't know what's going to happen with that. I know that they said that they're working on that, but that doesn't mean that's going to get approved. Like who knows how well that's going to work. Like, I don't, I don't know. That's pretty weird. Michael Walker says, Kaleidoscape is too expensive. That price needs to drop. It's, it's an expensive, there's, there's no, there's no denying it. Everybody knows it's expensive and it's a premium device. It's a niche device, but I mean, I have used it and I have seen it and you know, I'll leave 
whether it's justified, the price is justified up to you. But if you take the price out of it, which I know is going to be hard for people, but if you take the price out of it, it's, it's pretty much the best. Like it's, it's, it's an amazing piece of ingenuity and gear. It's expensive for most, but if you can afford it, it's very convenient. Yes, very, very, very convenient. Probably the most convenient out of, it is the most convenient. I mean, you don't have to do any ripping. You don't have to do any copying to your hard drive. Like, you don't have to worry about anything. Because I'm ripping Ultra HD Blu-rays and 3D Blu-rays and Blu-rays for a week, I've done 100 in a week and it's 4 terabytes so far. Yeah, it will take a while, especially if you're getting just getting started on ripping your 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 library. If you've have if you have hundreds, some people have thousands. I think I'm probably close to around like 500 or so now, but I started ripping mine man, 7 7 8 years ago. I enjoy it, but if you're just getting started, it's going to it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. There's no denying that. But once you get it all ripped, there, I wouldn't say it's it's as convenient as Cloud Escape because I mean you're just downloading it directly from a server. You don't have to do anything on your end. But once you get all your stuff ripped, it's super convenient. You don't have to mess with any discs. You know you can. There's a do players. I think you can if you have multiple. Um, you might be able to play them. Yeah, I mean you'll be able to play it throughout their, your house on your network if you have multiple. But yeah, I mean the convenience factor. A lot of people poo-poo on burning discs and ripping discs and put them on my hard drives. But the convenience factor is you just can't beat it. And it's it's basically like, like having your own Netflix. Hi, Michael. Yeah, it'll work with other players. It's just swapping out the hard drives. Super Dell TV says, "Hello, I've heard th I heard the news last night about Sapiti. I always said it's best to have the physical media. I agree, and that is why I will always always buy Blu-rays. I will never invest in streaming. Now, I do have the only thing that I am subscribed to is Disney Plus, and that's because they have some shows that you can't watch unless you're subscribed. So that sucks, but." Uh, and then Amazon, but I mean, that comes with Amazon Prime. Like, if I didn't have Amazon Prime, I wouldn't care about Amazon, and I hardly ever use Amazon. I am always going to buy discs, rip them, and keep them for myself. I have control over it. I mean, we've already seen some services, streaming services, you know, falter, and they're not here anymore. So, yeah, there's a convenience factor to that, too. <clears throat> and some people might say, oh, well, you're spending, you know, $20, $30 on a disc as opposed to $5.99 or $8.99 a month. Yeah, I mean, that's justifiable if you feel that way, but I just, I would rather have the disc and have control over my media. I always have it. Once I buy it, it's mine. I can do whatever I want with it. Rob Jane says, I still have all 500 of my discs. I just had the Zipiti because it was nice to have it all there in a nice library with the video wall. Yeah, when when I first started buying blu-rays it was buying blu-rays i didn't know anything about plex nothing i mean zapiti wasn't around zadu wasn't around at least i didn't know of it but i remember once my library started getting kind of big i started thinking i was like man there's got to be a way that i can get the media off of the disc and that way i don't have to keep fumbling with discs i don't have to worry about disc getting scratched disc getting lost and then i started looking into I started searching and I found Plex and I was like, oh, this sounds pretty cool. Free software, runs on your computer, it's a server. So I started doing that and then I was connecting my computer to my TV and that was janky because once, you know, like DTS, Master Audio and Dolby True HD, like sometimes it wouldn't work right. And then I had to try to use Kodi and stuff like that. And then Dolby Atmos came out and I was like, well, this isn't working because, you know, you have to download codecs and stuff to your computer and then i found out about nvidia shield and i was like oh this is the solution and then from there on it just evolved and yeah nvidia shield is still good and i do use it occasionally but once i got my zadu i hardly ever touch that thing unless i'm making videos to review
Percy says, I remember some years ago, Sony released a media player where you could download Sony 4K movies. For some reason, it got hated on. Sony dropped the platform. Now, Kaleidoscape is doing it. So, Sony still has... Let me stop screen sharing. Sony still has... Uh, I think it's called Bravia Core, but you can only get that on like their... I don't remember which TV it is, but it's one of their higher-end TVs where it's like super, super, super high bit rate over streaming. And apparently it works great. I think Shane uses it, Shane Lee. But, yeah. At Superdell, are you going to have a show this evening? I knew I would never... I knew I would never go to Plex because it was too complicated for me. Once I saw Zadu, I knew I was home. Plex is pretty, like, I still like Plex. And in fact, I think Plex still has, I think Plex still has the better operating system. Maybe not operating system, but on-screen display. I really like Plex, their, you know, on-screen display. Zadu is pretty good. It took me a little bit to get used to it but I'm starting to like it a lot more. The only thing that I would say Plex really has for me where Plex just straight up wins over Zadu and Zapiti is their, their chapter and preview thumbnails. I love that feature and I don't know why Zadu doesn't have that feature. Maybe they're working on it internally. I don't know, but it's super annoying to try to scrub through a movie on Zadu because there's no indication of where you're at other than a little timestamp, and that doesn't help me at all, at all. That's probably not even a big deal to most people, but I, that's one thing I hate, and I wish that they would do something comparable with, you know, Plex with that. User interface, that's the word I was trying to think of. I couldn't think of it. So, yeah. So, yeah, sad news. You know, you never, you always hate to see a company that goes away. Same thing happened to Oppo. What, back in, when was that? 20, was that 2019? 2017? I don't remember. But, yeah, Oppo's no more, so is going to be no more. They're kind of doing the same thing with that Apple did is saying that they're going to support it for a while, but who knows how long that's going to last. And if that app, if they even come out with the app, like, yeah, it sucks. And even though I prefer the Zadu over the Zapiti, I still thought the Zapiti was a very good product. I just, I did not like their user interface. It was just old and clunky. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about, oh, before I do that, let me go over to, so someone asked on the video, on my video today on the Zadu, how to get or where they can get 4K Blu-ray discs, disc drives, Ultra HD disc drives to burn discs. I, so the, the drive that I bought is, I think it's an LG I bought it probably back in 2017, 2017 or so when I started ripping movies and started using Plex and Nvidia Shield. And when I bought it, I didn't have to do anything to it. I didn't have to flash it, nothing. And actually, I had bought one previously and re didn't realize that it wasn't compatible. And I, I remember I went to make MKV and they had a thread on there that showed the approved uh, Blu-ray drives. I don't even think you can find the one that I have now. It's internal. But they do have uh, here on the Make Him Give you forum. Let me share this. So on the Make MKV forum, let me make this full screen. And yeah, so if you go here, and let me see if I can put this in the chat. Uh, if it'll let me. There we go. So if you go to that link, Make MKV gives you some guidelines on how to flash your 
your drive, and I think it has to be still a drive that's recommended in this list, but then you also have some recommended Ultra HD, Ultra HD drives to get. Some, I think, may need to be flashed, and then some you may just be able to use out of the box. But here's the list, so if anybody wants to go check that out. Oh yeah, so then he has drives that currently work. So yeah, check out that link, and if you're looking to switch over to Zidu, if you're coming from Zipedi, then you probably already know how to do this. But if you're if you were looking at Zipedi, and you're going to be looking at Zidu, and you need to know how to rip your content, check out this this uh, link, and it'll give you some guidelines. <clears throat> and then you can check out you know my video I have a bunch of videos on Zidu players I will be doing an official like actual review for the Z20 Pro I just wanted to make like an unboxing and a video that shows you how to like get it up and running so that'll be coming later let's go back to the comments here Super Dell TV says I love Plex because you can share with family and friends yeah so that's another feature that's really they're really unrivaled in that like Plex they're doing a lot of stuff they're doing a lot more stuff now that really isn't like Plex because when Plex first started it was share your content on your home network on pretty much any device and even when they first started they were only on available on a couple devices it was, it was like a computer and I think Nvidia Shield came out and now it's on everything like it's on TVs it's on Xbox I don't know if it's on PS4. It's probably on there now. However, the Plex app on the Xbox Series X is still trash. Like, I don't even use it. It's it's horrible. But on pretty much every other device, especially the NVIDIA Shield 2017 and 2019 version, that's like top tier Plex. So the cool thing about Plex is you can, you can share your content anywhere from the world. Anywhere, like literally. As long as you have internet access and you have your content shared, you can access your content on your home network from anywhere in the world. You can share it with friends and family. Um, they have watch parties now. I forget, um, it might be called watch party, but I've done that. I did that numerous times during the pandemic with family and friends that were in different states. And yeah, it was, it's awesome. With Zidu, Superdale TV says, with Zidu, I love that you don't have to create categories or different folders. You can have one folder of movies, and Zidu separates the movies by category on its own. Yeah. Yeah, so Zipedi did that as well. That's one thing that's cool about Zidu is that it downloads all the metadata for you and does it pretty quick. Every once in a while, like, which happened to me in my video, like, for some reason, it won't find the metadata or the, the movie posters, but it's, it's real simple. Usually, you just, it's either naming or something that it gets confused, but yeah. Well, before I go on, if you guys are looking for a new cell phone plan, cell phone company, try out Mint Mobile. That's my, my, uh, my link, my official link. So I have partnered with Mint Mobile. And if you guys want to help support the channel, I will get small commission if you guys click on that link and either subscribe to a subscription plan or buy a phone it doesn't cost you anything but mint mobile check them out you've probably seen all the videos with ryan reynolds and stuff like that all right let's go back to the comments michael walker says can't you share your ripped ultra hd blu-rays and blu-rays with others on I think he meant Zidu. Um, I don't know because I only ever had one. Now that I have two, um, I guess I can test that out. I want to say that you can, though. I think that's something that they promote, I guess, the word I'm looking for. But I'm not sure on that. I'll have to, I'll have to do some testing on that. Let's see. So yeah, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is Arundel is retiring their 1961 speaker line. Just found that out today. And actually, so I got an email that said that they are offering, let me share that. 
Share screen. Yeah, so I got an email, and others probably got it too. I don't think it's not anything that's like VIP or private or anything. I mean, it's on their website. But I got an email saying that they were doing it at 30% off on their 1961 speakers. Didn't read down any further. I made a community post, posted that. And then someone commented and was like, oh, I'm interested to see what they're going to re be replacing their 1961 series with. And I was like, what makes you think they're going to do that? And he was like, yeah, and the email says that they're retiring the, the 1961 speaker line. And I was like, wait, what? So then I went back and looked and I was like, oh, snap, I didn't, I didn't read <laughs> the entire email. So this is pretty big news. Like I'm, I'm actually surprised that they're, that they're doing this. And I'm also curious to see what they are going to be replacing it with. So yeah, if you are looking to get into Arndahl and you know, you were looking at the 1961 series, you better jump on it. Cause I don't know how long these are going to be around. I actually just reached out to them to get some more, uh, to finish out my, my home theater room. Uh, I have the 1961 bookshelves and then I have the 1961 towers that I'm using for my rear surrounds. I'm going to replace those rear surrounds with some more Knight 1723 monitor S's just so that they're all on the same uh, plane and everything is on the same level, tweeters and everything like that. I love the 1961s, but they're just too short. Uh, and like I can hear when anything goes to the back surrounds, I can hear the audio basically drop down because they're so small. But yeah, they are going to be retiring their 1961 series so they're going to be on sale they're all on sale for 30 percent off so let's see here yeah so it says as part of our unwavering commitment to innovation and excellence we are evolving our offerings to introduce the next generation of superior audio solutions in light of this we have made the strategic decision to gracefully retire the esteemed 1961 speaker series this progression is not a discontinuation, but a transformation aimed at elevating the auditory experience for our esteemed customers. So sad that the 1961s are being retired, but also very exciting because I am excited to see what Arndahl does next. And I'm sure this is probably all that they're going to say for now, but I'm going to try to see if I can get them on the channel for a live stream at some point when they're ready to say more. Cause this is interesting. Everybody loves Arndahl. Like they are next to Perlis and they've been blowing up the last couple of years and everybody's been reviewing them. Everybody loves them. So it'll be interesting to see what they replace these 1961 with the 1961 speaker line with and limited stock. So yeah, get on it, man. If you're interested in getting into Arndahl, 30% off, that's that's a pretty good deal. Rob James says, <clears throat> Michael, that's pretty fast. My setup was able to do 7 to 20 minute Blu-rays and 20 to 70 minute minutes for Ultra HD. Yeah, it takes me it takes me a couple hours to do to rip a Ultra HD Blu-ray. On average, it's probably like an hour and a half to two hours. It takes a while. Rob James says, I grabbed the last pair I needed to finish my bedroom setup. 1961 heights, 30% off was a nice little deal. Yeah. Yeah. So I have the 1961 tower uh, bookshelf speakers that I'm using for my front heights. And I'm going to ask for the 1961 heights. So I have six in ceilings or six height speakers. So I have two on the front that I added and then originally I only had four. I had four in-ceiling speakers. I want to replace those with four more 1961 heights. And then my surrounds are also in wall. I'm going to replace those with the 1961 monitors since they're very small and they're, they're pretty thin. And then I'm going to replace my 1961 towers with the 1723 monitor S's. And that will, I'll have a complete 100% full Arndahl speaker system. So I'm super excited about that. Michael Walker says, Rob James, 
Leo Well Professional 13 works with everything or is advertised, but I ripped Ultra HD between 60 minutes and two hours, which is way too long for me, but it works. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a long time, but unless you're just sitting at your computer waiting for it to finish, like, it's not really that long. I usually just put the disc in and I go and start watching something in my theater. Or I go eat, do something. Most of the time I end up forgetting about it and I'm like, oh yeah, let me go check on that. And either it's already done and a couple hours have passed or it's like halfway or 75% done. So, I mean, again, unless you're just sitting there <laughs> watching the screen waiting for it to finish, two hours isn't really that long. But I mean, that's those drives don't really, they're not, they don't burn or they don't rip as fast as they do read. Like you're going to be able to read it faster than you're going to be able to to rip the disc. Michael Walker says at Rob James, what is your setup for ripping? So yeah, some pretty interesting news the last couple days. The PD is going under iron dolls retiring their 1961 speaker line. Super excited to see what they replace that speaker line with. If they're going to go with something bigger, right underneath. Uh, it's going to be interesting because they have the 1723 line, which is their flagship, and the 1723S, which is still really huge, but not as big as the 1723. And the 1961s are pretty small. Like it's a, it's a pretty big gap between the 1961s and the 1723s's so i'm thinking and i don't know i don't have any inside knowledge nothing i'm just this is my thinking i'm thinking they're going to make the they're going to replace the 1961 line with something a little bit bigger that's my thought but we shall see get a couple things here so yeah, let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Zipidi going under. I know you've already said some comments, already left some comments. It'll be interesting to see what transpires over the next couple months, December, because it sounds like that's when they're going to basically, like, legit, you're not going to be able to add new media to Zipidi players. Your current stuff is still going to work. You can play, you can download. I think they said you can download like offline playlists or something like that. I don't know if you'll still get the the poster, poster art, stuff like that. Uh, and then you can use basically like the file explorer, which you won't get any metadata. It'll just be almost kind of like a DL, DLNA, I assume. Rob James says, I have an external drive, forget which model, but it's an Asus. I use Make MKV and an Apple Mini M1 regular old dock from Amazon. Cool. Yeah, I just use my Windows Windows 11 computer that I built during the pandemic. And I just, I took the same Ultra HD drive out of my other computer that I built and just put it in the new one since it had better specs and it was, you know, the newer computer. But I use that, I use Make MKV, and then I just have a bunch of hard drives connected to the computer, and then I share them over the network, and then I access that over, you know, Zidu, uh, Apple TV for Plex, NVIDIA Shield for Plex, stuff like that. The Apple Mini computer from Apple is pretty fast. Is that the M2? Because M1 was already fast. But yeah, those I haven't I haven't tried ripping with Apple. Uh, sometimes they can be Apple is a little bit weird with certain things. There's certain things that I like to use for Windows just because it's it's easier and it's quicker. But yeah, you probably it's probably better on the Apple with those M1 chips. I was thinking of getting a mini computer just for ripping. Yeah, man, look into the uh, look into the the Mac Minis. Those M2, I mean, even an M1 you could probably get away with and still come out good. But those Mac 2, those M2 Mac Minis, man, check those out. Michael Walker says, I have nothing Apple. Ouch, that hurts, man. I'm all Apple. At least for my main devices, like my phone, 
my Apple Watch, iPad, um, what else? I have a MacBook and then a Mac Studio. So I still have a couple. I have a laptop that I use. I'm actually just starting to not use it anymore because it's slowing down. I've had it for a long time. I think I got it in 20... I was still at my parents' house. So it was before 2018. So somewhere around 2015, 2016, 2017. It's shown its age. It's a, it's i3. It's, it's dying. Like I was trying to use it the other day for Zoom and the, the internet kept cutting out on me and I was using ethernet. So the only thing that I use windows for is my Plex server, my movie server and ripping. See Oliver Parker says, yes, the Apple mini M2 pro is really fast. Yep. Apple, those M M1, the M2 chips, those silicon chips, man, they're, they're pretty, pretty fast. I have so much Apple. I have no idea how it happened. <laughs> Yeah, originally I was like, I only used iPhones, and I was like, that's all I'm I'm using. I'm Windows guy, and then I got an iPad, and then after after I moved here, actually during the pandemic, I got a a, a MacBook because I started YouTube and I started editing, and it was taking forever to to export YouTube my you know YouTube videos on my Windows computer. And I was like, you know what? Those M1 chips are pretty pretty fast. And as soon as I got it, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm done with Windows. Like I said, I still use it for ripping and keeping my, my server on there. But other than that, I don't touch it. So I'm all Apple. Will you do a follow-up on the Nakamichi soundbar? I heard it's the best HTIB solution. I don't know simply because it's not mine and it's not my home and I'm I'm sure my coworker would probably let me come over there again at some point but I mean if if so it's probably not going to be anytime soon like he let me come over and film I mean I I've known him like he's we're cool I've known him for 15 years we've worked together for 15 years he was even my manager at one point for like a year and a half but we're really really cool I just don't like imposing on other people. Also, and I mentioned this in my last live stream, it's very it's very difficult trying to film something that's not in your environment. Like when I'm here at my house, I can get whatever products in that I want for review. I can take as much time as I need. I can set up the shots. I can rearrange the shots. I can set up my lighting, all that stuff. When you're at somebody else's house, you don't have that luxury. You're time constrained um, and... I actually felt like I could have done a lot better with that video, even though the video is doing really well. And I appreciate everybody that's supporting that video. It's probably going to end up being one of my best videos, you know, after the algorithm picks it up, hopefully. But it's still doing very good. Um, But it's I, it's going to be difficult to even I wouldn't even know how to do a really a follow up. But yeah, I mean, maybe it may be something that I do in the future. But I would say right now, no, just because it was so recent, <clears throat> excuse me, it was so recent and it's not my home. Like he's got a family, he's got a wife, he's got kids. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to like go over there and be like, Hey man, let me, let me film some more stuff. So I don't know. I mean, I've been checking with him and I'm asking him if he's done any more tweaks. I know he said he moved the subs. I think he moved the subs over to the sides. I think he's getting a better experience with that. Um, but yeah, like I said, maybe at some point, but I'm not going to guarantee that. Michael Walker says, I was a window MCSE admin in the nineties and I've never had an Apple product in my life. <laughs> my nephews and 18 and 19 year olds only have Apple products. That's fair. On a side note, the LS12000 came in Thursday. Oh, nice. Congratulations, man. I know you've been talking about that, man, for probably over a year. I think since when I made a video on that. Um, so, yeah, I know you were saving up for it. So, congrats on that, man. You're going you're gonna to enjoy that. 
Looking to get it up and running in two weeks, I need to find a calibrator in the Austin area. Yeah, actually, I have to take mine back and get it, and get it replaced because it has a dead pixel on it. It's so the original, the one that I had first that I did the review on, I had to send that back. Um, that was a you know used one. I had to send that back because it was going out to someone, and then the one that I got in after that, which is the one I have now, as soon as I hooked it up, I was like, oh man, there's a dead pixel on here. It's it's a it's a tiny tiny red dot, and the only time I ever see it is when it's like a white screen or something white or if there's something an image on the screen where there's like really light colors because the first time i noticed it i was like what is that and it was it was throwing me off because i wasn't seeing it all the time like if there's dark colors you don't see it but every time i would see i'm like man is that is there something on my screen and i went to the screen and i was like messing with them like no i think that's the projector and i was i forgot what i was watching and I saw it and I rewound, rewound the the scene and sure enough, I saw it. So, I mean, most of the times I forget about it and I don't remember it's there, but when I see it, it bothers me. So I actually have to take that in this week and get it replaced at this, uh, send that back. But congrats on your LS12000. Love that projector, man. What is the LS1200 Ultra Short Throw? So, yeah, that one is, it's, I mean, it's a short throw. It's also a short throw. So, it's, uh, I think, I don't have a video on that one. I think I may have mentioned it in one of my videos when I was at the grid. But it's, I mean, it's basically just a sh ultra short throw laser projector. That's, it's really good. All right, is he talking about ultra short throw or is he talking about the, the actual LS 12,000? Because there is an LS short throw. It may not be 1,200. I don't remember what the what the model number is, but there is an Epson ultra short throw. So I don't know if he's talking about the, the long throw or the short throw. Any in-walls coming from Arndahl? I don't know. I have zero inside information. I literally just found out today that they were retiring their 1961 line, which makes sense because a couple months ago they were doing a promotion and they, you know, they sent an email out to the content creators and YouTubers and basically saying like, hey, we want to try to get people to buy the 1961s. Like, you know, here's a link. Here's your, your, your unique link people can use. And I was like, okay, like they're trying to promote the product, but now it makes sense because, you know, they're retiring it. But as far as to answer your question, I don't know. Uh, it would be nice. I think I'm going away from in walls. I don't want to do in walls anymore just because they're not going to be as good as like a physical speaker. But it would be nice if they had that offering for people that, you know, are constrained on space and want to put stuff behind their screens. Okay, that the Nakamichi Shockwave SSE eARC was fantastic upgrade from the original Nakamichi Shockwave, but the Dragon took it to another level. My jaw is still on the floor. My jaw is still on the floor. Like I'm, I'm still impressed at that thing. You should compare the Arlison R5T to your Arn jaw speakers. Maybe the homie Shane can lend you his pair. Hmm. All I'm gonna say is there may be. That may be possible. That's all I'm going to say right now. Do you know anything about the tweaked dynamic mode on the LS12000 people are talking about? I do not. So actually, I, I haven't even had the time to even like sit down and calibrate mine. Obviously, it won't be calibrated because I don't know how to. But like even using the Spears and Munsell disc, like I literally haven't had time. I've just been using the stock uh, features, uh, stock settings on it. So... I want to sit down and actually go in and, you know, kind of dial it in with that disc. I've just been so busy. I just haven't had the time to. And it still looks it still looks good right now anyways. I mean, I know when I did the review versus the the shootout versus the the Sony and I saw like that that green um disc it was Basically, like there was a really green tint or hue to the Epson. Like when I was looking at the videos, you can go watch that video. And I was like, oh, wow, 
I don't see that because it's not side by side, but now that I know it's there, like I want to go and, and calibrate it properly, at least with the disc. Ideally, I would like to have someone come out and calibrate it, but uh, that's going to cost money. I just got the AWOL 3000 with 120 inch rising screen. Haven't set it up yet. Cool. Yeah, a lot of people love those AWOLs, those ultra short throw projectors. Elon will be getting the Nach Nakamichi Dragon next for reviewing. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Chana, Chana D Techno Dad said. I believe in his uh, live stream. I think he said he's getting one next. Or no, no, no. He said it on my previous live stream. Sony LG Samsung Nakamichi, who's got the best sound bar? I mean, I haven't heard sound, Sony's sound bars. I haven't heard LG's or Samsung's. Oh, wait, did I hear? I think I may have heard Samsung's at, at an expo or somewhere. But, I mean, I've had sound bars in my theater, or not in my theater, in my setup before, like in my bedroom and at my parents' house. They have one that I had a cheap, I mean, it was like 50 bucks. Like, it's not even in comparison, but I've heard other sound bars. Out of all the ones that I've heard so far, Nakamichi to me is the best. I can't tell you which one is the best out of those because I haven't heard them all. Nakamichi Dragon is in a different league to the others. Yeah. Like, I honestly don't see anybody beating. Probably the only thing that could come close to it is that Sony, uh, I forget what it's called, but Sony has that, I guess it's not a sound bar, but... They have the speakers where you can basically, they say you can place them anywhere you, you want if you can't put them in ideal places and it does like it's mapping thing. And a lot of people love it. I haven't heard it personally, but that's probably the only thing that's going to come closest to it. Sony HT A9, that's what it is. Yeah. So a lot of people love that. It would be cool to get a comparison, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. But all right, guys, I said it wasn't going to be a long live stream. I just wanted to hop on here. Now everybody's been talking about Zipidi. So I was like, you know what? Let me get on here and talk about Zipidi and Arndal since I have Arndal speakers and I have reviewed a Zipidi. So, yeah. Are you going to be switching over to Zidu? Are you going to be switching over to something like Kaleidoscape or even Dune? Jump down in the comments after this video, you know, pops up on YouTube or whatever. Or maybe I'll make a cut from it or something, but... OCGM says, hello, everyone. Hello. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Super Dell TV says, great show. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah Super Dell has his own uh, on YouTube channel, too. I've watched some of his Zidu videos. I believe he's got like uh, 80,000 plus subscribers. So go check out his channel on Zidu stuff as well. He does some stuff on there. Um, Ike. Easy Home Theater Tech, he's got a Z9X Pro, so he does some, I think he's got a video on there as well. Nice show, appreciate you, Percy, peace, yeah. Thank you everybody for tuning in, and uh, oh look, we got another comment here. That's like comparing a Honda Accord to a BMW, the Sony is out of its league. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> well... Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and hope everybody has a good evening, good rest of the week, and yeah, I guess if some other astounding news in the home theater world comes out that's shocking, maybe I'll hop on here again this week, but until then, um, hopefully I'll get another video out maybe by Saturday. Actually, I need to hop off now and go do some unboxings and stuff, but yeah, man, everybody have a good evening. Thank you for your time, Rob and everyone, and I'll catch you guys later.